Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at using the replace color filter inside of On One. And I think that this is really, really helpful when the color enhancer or color adjustment just don't give you the refinement that you really, really need. The color replacer or replace color tool will allow you to change the color to whatever you want. So let's go ahead and take a look at this photo that I have here on the screen, which is a cherry blossom. It's in my backyard. I photographed this using my uh, Sony a6700. And for those of you who have that com camera and you're wondering like, hey, how did you get a raw file to work inside of on one? Because they're at least for me, I don't think there's support for it. Uh, I, anyway, I'm using a DNG. Now I imported this into Lightroom and then I just opened it as a DNG inside of on one. So that way I get all of the raw capabilities such as changing my camera profile and things of that sort. So let's go ahead and do a really quick edit on this particular image uh, before we get into the replace color filter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and activate Brilliance AI. You already know how I like to use Brilliance AI or at least my settings. So on the screen, you can see those if you wanna copy it and then fine tune it for your own taste. All right, so Brilliance AI has finished with the photo. Here's the before and the after. I like what it did there, uh, real subtle. I think that it can be just a little bit brighter. So we're gonna come into Bruins AI and I am just going to pull up on the amount here, all right? And just let, let it kind of do its thing as far as improving the brightness, uh, maybe something to about here. And I think that that's good enough for what I want to demonstrate today. All right. It's very important to have good luminance values when you start to modify colors because you want to see the true color. And if it's too dark, then you're not really going to see that. So get it to a lightness value that you are OK with. The other thing you can do is check your levels and holding down the J key. You can see I'm not blowing out any of my highlights or my shadows. And a lot of the information is in the center of the image. So if you really, really want to get like super technical on how to modify the colors, then you should probably contrast your image a little bit so you can start to spread out and we'll even push up on the highlights here to really get that uh, moving more to the right of the histogram. So this is probably a better exposed image for this particular file. But I don't want to spend too much time on that because this video is about replace color. And this is a filter that came out, I want to say, in Photo Raw 2022. Don't quote me on that. I know it's been around for a while, but it just doesn't get used as much. It was a big deal when it was added, but very few people talk about it, and myself included. But there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this particular filter. So for these cherry blossoms, I like the color pink. And let me display or demonstrate the issue that you may run into. So you may grab the color enhancer or a color adjustment tool, whichever one you choose to use. And you could grab the saturation and maybe even come over here and you know pull on the purples and it, it's good right I, th I think it does a good job for what it's meant to do there let's go ahead and reset that you can even come down and grab the hue grab this color picker and come right back over here and now i am adjusting the hue it looks like it's selecting reds all right and it's doing a pretty decent job but it's not very drastic uh, with the reds moving to the orange, it's really making them a little desaturated. In my opinion, this is not the way that I would like to work. You may even be able to come into the purples and move the hue around on the purples, but that just gets way too complicated. And this is why I think the color replacement tool or replace color tool is a little bit better at doing the whole replacement idea. All right. So let's just make sure that's not impacting the image, which it is not. And the way that this tool works is 
you'll grab this little eyedropper next to the color box here and you can come onto the image. So I was sampling this area right here. I'm just going to click there. And what it does is it puts a sample of that color into the box. Now this is the target color. This is what on one is looking for to remove, to modify, to do whatever you want to tell it to do. All right. And it's at a hundred percent or the amount is at a hundred percent in the range. You can, you know, fine tune this, like how detailed do you want it to look for that color in the image? If you just wanted to like look for every single thing that could have that shade, then there you go. Um, or you can bring it down be a little bit more, uh, fine tune things like that. And then of course you have your amount, and this is how aggressive is this going to uh, deal with that particular color? Like how aggressively is it going to address that particular color? All right. Now I'm going to move this down to about 33 for now. You can always remodify this later. And that's exactly what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, but now I need to choose what color do I want this to turn into? And one of the things that I love about the color replacement tool is you could choose literally any color. You can get fine tuned to the, the hex code if you want it to by clicking on the sliders and then coming over to the RGB sliders drop down here. And you could put in a hex uh, number or a hex color. If you're not familiar with those, don't worry about it. Just know that it's a way of finding a very, very precise color inside of this space. All right. Now, if you don't want to do any of that, you can use the color wheel. You can even use the swatches right here. Uh, whatever you want to use. If you got some built, uh, you could use the spectrum. And of course, you can use the little color pencils and those are options on the Mac. I'm sure PC has something similar to this, uh, but I do know you can use the hex code and they also have the spectrum uh, to if I remember correctly. Now, what I'm going to do is brighten this up just a touch and I want the color to change from this purple, lavender, light pink looking color to a more robust uh, pink, maybe. Let's see, maybe something, maybe it should be a little bit darker. Okay. So we'll go something like that. Now, this is where you really have to kind of play around with, okay, how do I want this to work? How aggressively do I want this to blend in with my image? All right. So if you pull all the way up on the saturation, obviously it's going to change. Uh, the overall look there, but you can even pull the amount slider here and really get some uh, different looking um, colors, if you will, uh, or at least diff a different look on your image. I won't say different looking colors. And this is where you just got to kind of play around with it and say, okay, where does this work the best in my particular image? Now, turning this off and on is extremely helpful because you start to see where all of those color values are going. And I think maybe somewhere around here is probably okay. So congratulations, you changed the color. This looks like crap. <laughs> all right. And the reason why it looks like crap is because it's not masked in very well. So what I'm going to do is click on this color here, grab the hex code, by hitting command and C, then I'm going to come over to the masking and I'm going to click on color range and I am going to activate this color range, paste in the hex code, hit return. So that way it actually takes. And now what I have is the ability. Let's go ahead and oh, let me make sure I'm over here clicking stuff and all right, good. Let's close that out. And now if I hit the letter O, you can see it's going all over the image and we don't really care to have that happen. I want to fine tune this right into those flower petals, uh, which is where most of all of uh, the color that I want to manipulate is in. All right. So I could bring this down quite a bit, hit the letter O 
now you can see that it's only targeting those areas and the way that we fix these weird looking areas is we come up here to feather and we just pull our feather out so that way it blends back into the image and we start to get that refinement now no matter what color i move this to it's going to blend so much better with the overall image all right so maybe we end up somewhere here in this purple and we can crank up on the amount and maybe pull back on the saturation uh, maybe we go a little bit further and yeah you know maybe we go with a red maybe we do go with something that's a little bit closer to red but maybe towards the end of the purple uh, spectrum and you know this is just trial and error you play around with it until you get the color that you want but now that I know I'm in the areas that I need this to be in by using that color range mask I'm able to do a lot more uh, I can target it a little bit more effectively so if I turn this off and turn it back on you can see how I am uh, really addressing this now what I will say is this filter goes really really well with a color enhancer because you get the saturation and the vibrance and if you need it to you can mask this in and maybe we'll pull down on the saturation sounds counterintuitive or seems counterintuitive uh, but you know you can do all kinds of stuff maybe we just warm up the entire image to give a little bit more of that that warmth in the overall photo so here's what we started out with not a bad photo in fact i really enjoy this photo but here's what we have now and it's a little bit more colorful and of course if that's just not working for you there's a few different options that you have available so we can come over to the settings of our layer stack and this is something that I don't talk about often but you have blend options for your layer stack so all of your layers or all of your effects that are over here in the effects stack you can actually blend with the original image however you want it to so maybe I want to throw an overlay or a soft light on here and then just pull this down you can almost use this like it's its own layer up here all right there's just so many things that we can do with our photos and i really enjoy uh, manipulating colors using on one photo raw so if i turn this off and turn it back on you can really see what it's doing to the overall image so hopefully you found some value in this particular video if you did smash the like button if you got questions about the replace color filter or really just any filter inside of on one let me know in the comment section below if you want to get a hold of me send me an email freewillphotos at gmail.com until next time i want you to stay inspired and keep creating peace